what is up guys welcome back to the channel guys we're here with a geography now video learning about the balkans uh i got an idea of what the balkan countries are um i might be saying that wrong balkan balkans balkan balkans whichever um hopefully i'm saying it right i did see some flags down here uh i believe that's hungary i might be wrong albania kosovo greece uh i think that's croatia italy that looked like montenegro north Macedonia, and we got maybe slovakia slovenia serbia um one of those two three uh romania and turkey so yeah i'm gonna be learning a little bit more like i said i've probably done some of the video for some of them i didn't know but I did want to learn about the Balkans, so we here with it. My guy Barbie going to tell us. Y'all make sure y'all subscribe to Geography Now. Link is in the description. Let's check it out. Hey, everybody. So, as you know, I'm working on the scripts for the next few country episodes, which means this is going to be a filler week. Heavily requested, filler. but never really fulfilled until now. The Balkans <laughs> Explained, a.k.a. Balkans. Europe's most dysfunctional family. Before we get into this, though, <laughs> just want to give a quick shout out to one of my favorite brands to work with, Cetera. You guys know I'm very picky Cetera, with which brands that. we get to sponsor here on Geography Now, and Cetera is definitely cool on my list. Cetera is a geography learning game. Go to their website to find out more, download the app if you want, or you can play for free on the website. Cetera. Thank Thank you. Anyway, back to the Balkans. Now, if you look at the map of Southern Europe, you see this whole mess and you're like, the hell is going on? <laughs> Basically, this place has a lot of weird history. Everybody loves and hates each other. These two countries can understand each other when they speak, as can these four, but they all swear it's <laughs> distinct different languages. In modern times today, generally, they're all kind of cool with each other. And the younger generation has pretty much moved on from all that animosity that their grandparents endured during yeah. war times. Like, I've heard Greek people say, hey, I've traveled to Albania and Turkey, the nations of our enemies enemies and yet they were like totally treated fine by the locals when they yeah. told them that they were Greek and they had a great time. So it's pretty much like that. Like mostly the government and the zealous people are just the ones that create the modern drama. Quick historical content. I seem I feel like that's here too. It's always drama with politics for some reason. Text. This entire area at one point was ruled over the Ottoman Empire. Then during the 20th century, half of it was Yugoslavia. Wars, battles, music, and Rakia. Done. Geographically Thanks. speaking, what exactly are the boundaries of the Balkans? Apparently, the Balkan Peninsula is surrounded by the Adriatic Sea to the west, the Mediterranean Sea to the south, and the Black Sea to the east. Its northern boundary is often given as the Danube, Sava, and Kupa rivers, or Danube the Balkan rivers. and Dinaric Alps mountain ranges. The countries that lie entirely in the area include Albania, Bosnia and Herzegovina, Bulgaria, Montenegro, and the newly named North Macedonia, as well as the disputed partially recognized Kosovo area, and parts of Croatia, Serbia, Slovenia, most of Greece, and a very small part of Romania, Turkey, and even Italy. In this episode, okay. though, we're just going to talk about the major Balkan nations that are either completely or mostly located within the Balkan area. So no Italy, and I talked to some Romanian people, and a lot of them said, nah, we're not Balkan, we're just our own thing in Southern Europe. So I'm uh, somebody had the flag down there because I, I thought but I have when I was researching this I did see some people include Romania still not gonna talk Maybe about Romania and with that being said let's start off alphabetically Albania Ooh, Albania. Albania was one of the first episodes I made that was so long ago out of all the Balkan <laughs> nations Albania is probably like the one that sticks out like a sore thumb the most it's like the oddball that doesn't quite fit <laughs> in it's like the emo kid at the dinner table their language not has the no kid. other relatives and they have a bunch of these like dome bunkers all over the country because their former leader was kind of paranoid I mean come on Albanians let's be real and for Hoha he was a little intense about half the country is Muslim, which is interesting because they went through a weird communist era in which all religious practice was banned and illegal, but Dang. like the religious community still kind of held on. For the longest time, they were actually closed off to the entire world except China. Today, however, they are completely opened up and a lot of like intrepid Europeans like to travel here because there's a lot of like secret hidden beaches. Oh, Everything nice. here is cheap. They are a candidate to join the EU. However, they still have some political obstacles that they have to overcome. In so I wonder now, because this video is fairly old now, I wonder if they have joined the EU. But I think I've done, I've done a little bit. I might have done one video of Albania, probably just the geography now, but I know I did the music. Uh, I think... 2021 Eurovision I'm in order to join and uh yeah they uh, they oh, kind of no, don't bit. really get along well with Serbia because of the whole uh -oh. Kosovo thing which we will explain in a bit Bosnia and Herzegovina our first South Slavic nation this is the I think I said Kosovo 
Instead of Bosnia. Most confusing political entity I in, I would argue, the entire world. Just watch the episode if you want to recap, but basically, Bosnia, they have no. three constituent people groups. No other country has this. Maybe kind of Comoros, but that's a little different. And it's weird, because like, everything here comes in threes. The Bosnians or Bosniaks are mostly Muslim, the Serbians are mostly Orthodox, and the Croatians are mostly Catholic. The country is divided into three parts. This all happened because after the breakup of Yugoslavia, there was a Bosnian war, yada yada yada, and here we are. What's even crazier is they have three presidents, one for each of the constituent groups. And even oh, weirder, wow. they all pretty much speak the same language, but they are very keen to make sure that they distinguish that it's Croatian, Serbian, and Bosnian. Like, it's all basically the same thing, but they mm. still, like, distinguish it. The country is almost completely landlocked, but they have this small little 20 kilometer long coast on the Adriatic. Uh, but yeah, for what it's worth, uh, they have a really Pretty cool big. art and music scene. They hosted the Winter Olympics in Sarajevo. You still see some of the remnants of the Ottoman Empire and things like food and architecture. Mm -hmm. And yeah, interesting place that not a lot of people talk about. Yeah, I definitely, I might have seen one video about Bosnia and Herzegovina. That's about it. It was interesting. I think I did Bosnia a back video. Bulgaria, our second Bulgaria, Slavic. I said Hungary. Bulgaria. I think Hungary got the green at the top. Of Nation. Ah, the land of Bulgaria. roses. Every time I get something sent in from Bulgaria for fan mail, it always usually includes something made out of roses. Bulgaria is, how can I put it? It's kind of like the uh, slowly withering beauty. Here's the thing, like Bulgaria is loaded with lots of cool, you know, natural sights and wonders and culture, but like a lot of people are just leaving. Since the early 90s, wow. about a quarter of their entire population has left, making them one of the highest populated decline nations in the world. Joining the EU has helped a bit, but they still rank as the poorest nation in the EU. Nonetheless, lots of history started here. They're proud of being known as the place where the Cyrillic alphabet was created by these two brothers. They love their bagpipes. Technically, they're descended from the Bulgars, which like migrated from Asia. So technically, you could say Bulgarians have Asian roots. Bulgarians and Macedonians are pretty much family. I mean, they speak the exact same language almost. In fact, many Bulgarians will say that Macedonians are just kind of like confused Bulgarians. <laughs> Just the biggest difference is that North Macedonia was Confused historically Bulgarians. part of Yugoslavia, whereas Bulgaria was not. Keep in mind, though, their language is Slavic, but it is not intelligible to the Serbo-Croat Bosnian languages. Like, they can't understand oh. each other. Croatia, our third Slavic nation. Croatia is kind of like the one that got really lucky. It's the land of the best Balkan sunsets. All those uh, Game of Thrones locations. They even have Game of Thrones tours. Croatia. What? I've been watching Game of Thrones. I didn't know that was in Croatia. Now, this is going to make me want to check out more Croatia. Fucking sunsets. All those uh, Game of Thrones that. locations. They even have Game of Thrones tours. Croatia is one of the five Catholic-influenced Slavic nations, whereas the rest are predominantly Orthodox. You see a lot of Italian and ancient Roman influence here. Lots of Italians even live here. They are seafaring folk. Thousands of islands and rocks off the coast. They have the second nice. highest quality of life index in the Balkans. Their tourism sector has just been exploding. Ooh. So many cool natural and man-made sites. Huge music and that. art scene here. In fact, one of my favorite bands, Two Cellos, was started Two here. Cellos. And uh, yeah, overall, they've pretty much moved on from war times and uh, they've built up quite a reputation. Croatia. Greece. We all know Greece. this one. Very few countries love their culture and history and background as much as Greek people do. Greeks love being Greek. Greece is kind of like <laughs> the master of history and the remnant to the ancients, the cradle of Western civilization. And now they're known for being loud dancing party animals. Sorry, it's, <laughs> come on, Greeks, you know it's true. Like Albania, they are a linguistic anomaly. They have no other cousin languages. However, it's interesting because Koine Greek was the lingua franca of the Roman Empire. So you had people all over on three continents mm. speaking Greek, ancient Greek. They are a seafaring powerhouse. Uh, I did see a video of Greece. I think this was, had to be a year ago when I was starting off just learning about different countries and Greece looks amazing. I think I, I may have done two videos. I need to check out more. The Balkans underrated. I, I'm not going to lie. Just some some of the different countries that I'm seeing now, very underrated. Over 6,000 islands and the 11th longest coastline in the world. I'm not gonna get into the whole economy and EU drama thing, we all know about it. We'll talk about the North Macedonia thing in a bit, but for what it's worth, yeah, Greece is popular. They love Serbians and Serbians love Greece. They've worked <laughs> historically alongside each other a lot, especially during the fight against the Ottomans. And plus Serbia also kind of likes how Greece does not recognize Kosovo, which brings us to the partially recognized disputed area of of Kosovo. Kosovo. Kosovo is like the weird wild card guy that nobody really wants to get involved in except for Serbia and Albania. If you ask a somewhat nationalistic Serbian, they will probably say, Kosovo belongs to Serbia. They are not a country. It is our autonomous province of Kosovo and Metohija. If you ask 
feel like somebody told me that too. I did the Serbia. Uh, I didn't do the. Ge- I did the geography now in Serbia, and I done. I think it was just a facts video about Serbia, and they they somebody commented that too. They were like, Kosovo is Serbia. Kosovo belongs to Serbia. They are not a country. It is our autonomous province of Kosovo and Metohija. If you ask a Kosovar, they will probably say, 102 member states of the UN recognize us. We claimed independence in 2008. We are an observer state of the UN. But then Serbia will say, yeah, but not a full participating member state. Plus, there's a lot of Serbian history and cultural sites in Kosovo. Okay, well, we're still in pretty much in every sense a country. Even your government recognizes our administration. Well, you can claim whatever you want, but no, you're not a country. And it goes on. Whatever you want to claim Kosovo is, it's basically like Albania's little brother. The majority of people in Kosovo are Albanian. There was a huge war in the 90s after the breakup of Yugoslavia, which pretty much led to what we have now. And keep in mind, there is a Serbian minority. Sorry, was that kid hitchhiking a tank? Already in Kosovo, which is where a lot of the conflict centers around. Whatever you want to consider Kosovo as, basically it's a place that's kind of trying to move into the 21st century in a weird, awkward way. Tourism is starting to grow, especially amongst intrepid travelers who like to say that they've been to a disputed area. But yeah, probably <laughs> the biggest controversy of the Balkans. Montenegro, the fourth Montenegro. Slavic country. I had so much fun making the Montenegro episode because I, I had no idea how episode. hilarious their reputation was amongst the Balkans. If you didn't watch the episode, basically Basically, Montenegro is the sleepiest country on earth. They even have a lazy Olympics where you can get about lazy. 400 euros just for being the person who does nothing for the longest. How do I sign up for that? That sounds nice. I don't mind being having lazy day. That's interesting. Lazy Olympics where you can get about 400 euros just for being the person who <laughs> does funny. nothing for the longest. They're like the chill, lazy, little hippie sister of Serbia that has access to the beach and she likes to sleep on the beach. They were the last part of the former Yugoslavian Republic to break away in 2006 from Serbia, probably because they were sleeping and missed the deadline. They speak pretty much the same language as Serbians, Croats, and Bosnians, but they just have their own little Montenegrin accent. They really don't like getting into drama or conflicts, which is no funny drama. because historically they were known for being like really vicious fighters. They get along with pretty much all of their neighbors. However, in the end, Serbia is just kind of like their best friend-ish. Like a lot of Montenegrins go to Serbia for education and job opportunities, and Serbia likes to use Montenegro for access to the sea. The newly named North Macedonia. Ooh, the country that must North not Macedonia. be named. Other than Kosovo, this is probably the most controversial area in the Balkans. For the longest time, they had gone through a series of disputes and economic blockades, mostly against Greece, all because of the name. I don't have too much time to explain just watch the video which is already kind of outdated for the longest time yeah. under the un they were labeled as the former yugoslav republic of macedonia many countries called them the republic what? of macedonia greeks were not happy because the word macedonia implies hellenistic roots when clearly the people of this area are they're not greek they even they speak a slavic language but then the macedonians have oh. their side of the argument and then it just gets kind of messy i'm not gonna go further into this but anyway yeah the people here are kind of like in a tug of war against everybody around them i mean bulgaria and they are literally surrounded anyway, by yeah. everybody. They're like the middleman. They're right there. The people here are kind of like in a tug of hey. war against everybody around them. I mean, Bulgarians are kind of like, come on, you guys are basically Bulgarians. Just join us. Serbia is like, you guys are kind of cool. And plus you and Montenegro are the only two countries that kind of split apart from us without any bloodshed. But your church is kind of messed up. Albania is like, I don't like your Western border, especially by <laughs> Lake Ohrid. Culturally, it's a huge mix as well. So you have like a weird Orthodox Muslim mix thing going on, kind of. They have a lot of preserved Byzantine frescoes and paintings. I was told a lot of Balkan people love going here because everything is like super cheap and they do have pretty oh. good food here. And I mean, if you just kind of like look past all the semantics and like overarching diplomatic issues, then they're just like people that like to eat, have fun and chill. It's just, yeah, government and politics My makes type of things people, I like crazy. Them. Serbia. Oh boy. If you ask anybody in the Balkans, they all have an opinion on Serbia. A lot of people <laughs> will probably say Serbia is kind of like where all the crazy stuff starts. It's the country they all love to hate and hate to love. Like they kind of started and pushed the kingdom of Yugoslavia. Yugoslavia. They kind of started World War One and the Yugoslav Wars. Let's be honest though, Yugoslavia was kind of like a collective effort. I mean, Tito was Croat Slovene. But then people are like, eh, I Tito. guess the new younger generation that never saw war is kind of cool and a little sexy, I guess. <laughs> the thing is, for the longest time, Serbia was actually a kingdom apart from the Austro-Hungarian Empire, unlike Croatia and Bosnia, which were part of it. So they're kind of proud of the fact oh, that they kind of like stood their ground. Of course, they are another Slavic nation. They can understand Croatians and Bosnians. They are a negotiating 
winning candidate to join the EU. But of course, everything is on hold because of the whole Kosovo thing. Plus, it's interesting because if they did join the EU, that would kind of maybe strain their relations with Russia, which is like one of their closest allies. That's a whole mm. other thing. But yeah. I mean, there's a lot of history and culture here too. Belgrade is like over 7,000 years old and it was actually Celtic before it was Roman. It was actually voted wow. by Lonely Planet oh, as right. the city with the best nightlife. They love raspberries and they have like one of the largest Orthodox Saint churches Sabu. in the world. And like, in a nutshell, they are such a key figure in the Balkans. And uh, yeah, what else? Uh, Novak Djokovic. And finally, Slovenia. And now they got Nikola Djokovic. <laughs> figure in the Balkans. And uh, yeah, what else? Uh, Novak Djokovic. And finally, Slovenia. Slovenia, Slovenia is the richest Slovenia. and most well-off of all the Balkan nations. Their language is kind of intelligible to the Serbo-Bosnian-Croat mm -hmm. language, but I heard it's just like a little bit more difficult to understand. They have beautiful world-renowned buildings and monasteries. They don't like to cause any drama. They get along very well with Italy. There's a lot of Italians that live here. You know, they're kind of pissed off that Italy got the entire Trieste coast, cutting off half of their access to the sea. But mm. eh. And it's kind of like whenever they're at a party with all their cousins, it's like everybody's drinking rakia, but then Slovenia is like the one who's like, I prefer a nice glass of wine, which is like almost <laughs> sacrilege. Serbians, Croatians, and Bosnians kind of joke that Slovenians are kind of like the stuck up people. They're kind of like the nerdy brother that got a good job in banking and he still shows up to the family reunions, but he kind of like keeps his distance and doesn't want to party too hard because he has work in the morning and everybody else is like, ah, oh, you little wuss. But hey, they're rich, so they don't care. And that's basically <laughs> it. There's so much I missed out on. I know I could have added a lot more but that's why i kind of want you guys to explain in the comments which is going to be a beautiful place and it's going to have no controversy and no arguments obviously <laughs> for what it comes down to though for the sure. balkans is a place with lots of culture and history it's just kind of jumbled up a little bit here and there that's kind of the beauty of it all you know people bringing something different to the table in the end they all love doing their shots of rakia and they can all agree at least we're not under the ottoman empire anymore this was fun hope you have a good one stay cool stay tuned Nice. I feel like I learned a good amount here. I learned a good amount. Now I know the Balkans is technically Southern Europe. Uh, yeah, I mess up on these flags. Uh, Bulgaria and hung Hungary. Same color. The green. I think the green is at the top of Hungary. That's what I think. Uh, but yeah, definitely underrated. I think in the case of just learning about, you know, all the different countries here in Europe. But Definitely got to get more into the Balkans. Uh, like I said, uh, I have done some country. I've done Serbia recently. Uh, done Greece, Italy. But those are like when I first started off. I haven't really got into them too, too much. But I plan on it. I plan on it. Uh, Slovenia, Slovakia, Croatia, Serbia. Uh, I ain't going to lie. We mess up on the flags because uh, the emblems. But I'm when i'm looking at it it starts everything starts clicking i haven't done flags in a minute so but when i look at them i'll be like okay yeah i got this i got this i do know my flags i know my flags need to work on knowing where everything is so but i enjoy this hope y'all did as well if y'all got some videos y'all want to recommend from your country from your favorite country located in the balkans willing to check that out or if you want me to check, I did see a top 10 place or 15 place by Ryan Shirley. Y'all make sure to check him out, subscribe to his channel. So I'm going to check that out. See the Balkans or something like that. That's all I have. Y'all hit that subscribe button. And y'all be blessed. Be the best and be you. I'm out.